Stephen, you're going to be talking to us tonight about population, the ideal population for the world. Most people who discuss this uh, seem to assume that there are already too many people, and they approach it from the point of view of sustainability. Two questions. What do you think about that approach to the issue? And if, if you don't like it, how do you approach the, the question? Well, to assume that there are already too many people in the world is to refuse to think about the actual issue. It's certainly true that there is such a thing as too many people. There is a limit to what the Earth can support, at least with current technology. There's also such a thing as too few people. I don't think any one of us would want to live in a world where there are only 10 other people. Uh, and so once you've acknowledged that there's such a thing as too many and such a thing as too few, uh, then you've got to face the question of whether we've currently got too many or too few, and you need a, a framework for thinking about that. Can you describe the framework that you, th you think is the, the right one? Yeah, I think it's the same framework that we use to decide whether the world has too much or too little of anything. Namely, we ask whether the decision makers were fully accounting for the costs and benefits of their actions. We think the world has too much pollution, for example, because the people who pollute don't fully account for the costs of that pollution. We think there are too few people out picking up trash in the park because they don't fully account for the benefits of, of what they're doing. Um, when it comes to population, the relevant decision makers are the parents and the potential parents who are deciding whether to have another child. And we need to look at the costs and benefits that those people are facing. The parents account for the costs and benefits of having children. They account for the costs they're going to bear, the late night feedings, the cost of education feeding, and so on. They account for the benefits, all the love they're going to have. Nobody needs to second guess that. Those are people making choices for themselves, and we generally think that when people make choices for themselves, they make the right choices. The social issue comes up when the effects of those choices spill over onto other people. So when parents decide to have another child, the, re the costs and benefits that are really interesting for this issue are the costs and benefits that spill over. On the positive side, more children, more people means more diversity. If you like Ethiopian restaurants, if you like chamber music, if you like parasailing, if you like videos from the Institute for Economic Affairs, then uh, you should be very glad that the world population is as big as it is because you need a critical mass for those things and they're all hanging on by a thread. When there are more people, there are more potential trading partners, more customers, more possible employers, employees, suppliers, people for you to trade with in every possible way, more diversity, as I mentioned, more friendship, more love. You might think that a world of 7 billion people is enough for everybody to find love, and yet there are still 55 million active profiles on Match.com, so apparently 7 billion is not quite enough. But all of that leaves out the big one, and the big one is that each person who is born spends a lifetime having ideas. Little ideas like, hey, let's put on a play. Big ideas like, hey, I wonder if I can make uh, computer chips out of silicon. Other people benefit from those ideas because they copy those ideas and they build on those ideas and it helps make other people's ideas better. Those are all benefits that parents generally don't account for when they decide to have another child. They spill over and those are reasons why we should want the population to be bigger than it is. Now that doesn't mean there might not be countervailing reasons in the other direction, but those are all reasons we should want more people. On the other hand, from people who my parents didn't care about, if I become a thief, if I become a major polluter, if I decide to form an army and invade other people's property and take it from them, those are externalities that we might want to worry about. The, the obvious one which the critics of large populations will bring up, which is the unsustainable burden imposed on finite resources of but the Earth. Again, uh, you're imposing that burden only insofar as you're taking resources from other people. We get our resources from our families. Um, we also get resources from the things we produce ourselves. Neither of those hurts anybody outside our families. And yes, there are people in my family who have every right to wish that I had never been born so that they would have more. Um, but I don't think you have a right to wish that because if I hadn't been born, all those vast resources I got from my parents would not have gone to you anyway. How else do I take resources away from you? Again, maybe I trade you something for them, but that's not, that's not a cost to you. If you want to argue that there's a negative externality in the fact that I'm taking resources from other people, you've got to talk pretty hard about exactly how I'm getting my hands on those resources and why it's negative. And I think in most cases you're going to find that hard to do.